Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Um, good afternoon, my time. Good evening, maybe some of you guys' time. Um, I, I'm making this video because uh, I want to encourage parents um, that's got trouble kids, that kids that's going through things or kids that's carrying you through things. Um, and just if I had a topic on even on today, I'm gonna try to every time I come on live have some kind of topic that uh, that is, is the foundation of what I'm talking about. And if I have one, is uh, family matters. Um, the Lord just laid it on my heart to go ahead and make this video. Um, I was silent for almost six months to eight months prior to what happened. Even right now, um, you. You will understand once I get to the end of it. Um, six months, prior to eight months ago, uh, my daughter, she got on the book and was talking about, you know, how I disciplined them in the house and this and other. Talking about um, going against my going against my wife and stuff like that. Um, the discipline part may have been true, but going against my wife and we all argue and stuff like that. I'm not going to deny that, but as she's saying, fighting physical, no. Nope. My wife can come in here and tell you, no, nope, I don't. I don't hit on her, beat on her, none of that. Um, I was trying to tell her um, in several occasions um, that my daughter jumps on her, was jumping on her, let me put it that way, and hitting her and fighting on her and beating on her. And I told her that's not okay. Um, I was let my wife know sometimes we have to learn how to protect ourselves. Uh, any means necessary um, is not okay for no child to beat on their parents or disrespect a parent, period. Um, I say that to say this. A lot of people uh, took to Facebook on what she was saying. And, and I'm not ashamed. Um, CPS came out to do their investigation and they came out and uh, went to court and my daughter, she was on probation. Um, and I told the judge, well, the, the first judge, let me tell you how God works. See, God, God word is always going to stand. Um, the Bible said, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I told the judge, I told even her, the probation officer, CPS, who all came out. I said, I'm not buckling. I mean, if you have a problem with me, um, discipline my children, that's your problem, not mine. Because at the end of the day, the, the, those children are mine. And it's for me to discipline my kids. I'm not sitting beating them and knocking teeth and stuff out, but letting them know, no mean no. And it's not okay to disrespect your parents. And um, I talked to the CPS and they had an officer, two officers, matter of fact, that came out. Um, one sat down, the young lady went in there and talked to Leah. And she came back out with tears in her eyes and uh, she started talking. She said, uh, you know, she said, walking through your home and stuff, she said, uh, it's been a rough week for me. That's what the officer said. She said it was a, a rough week for her. She said she had experienced a, I don't know if it was a 12, 11 or 12 year old, maybe younger um, child died in a car wreck. Um, got, they got in a car wreck and died in her arms. That's what she said. And she said, and she had calls that um, we live here in California, but if there's the desert around where we stay. So they were saying that she was saying that um, she had to make calls into the into the desert and there where there was children, young babies and stuff living in the desert in a tent, no water, no nothing. And, you know, they had to go and take the children, put them in a place that. Uh, where they can have water, food, because of those parents, they was addicted to alcohol and drugs and stuff and had the children there living in the desert. I don't know if y'all know about the desert, but the desert here, um, when it's 117 or 120, it's a little hotter than that. Um, no air, no nothing. I mean, hot, hot. Sun in the desert. Just imagine just the desert and the kids just laying in a tent or even when they're trying to play and just how hot. And then the desert itself is not safe. You got all kind of snakes, coyotes. You got all kind of um, mountain lions and everything that goes on in the desert. So she to say that, to say this, she was saying to me and my wife, she said, uh, to come in your, your home and see that your daughter got a queen-size bed, a big flat screen TV on the wall, 
open up her closet. She got name brand clothes and shoes, Air Force Ones, even my boys, uh, LeBron James, Jordans, all that kind of stuff. Going to your garage, you know, they got bicycles, motorcycles, they got all, uh, basketball court. They have all of this. And she said, for them to act the way they act and just going to get kids that have nothing, they, she said, they should be ashamed. And I told them, I said, let me tell you something. I said, I'm going to discipline my children. I'm going to do what I need to do as a parent. I'm not giving up my kids to the streets. I'm not giving up my kids to what society say. And I'm going to tell y'all something. If there are anything, my CPS, we didn't, I didn't, I didn't know too much about CPS growing up because um, my mom then was our CPS. What I do with my children now, that's what they do. We had mentors and stuff that disciplined us too and told us what to do. And we, we did what they told us to do. Uh, if we're going to have any kind of CPS or anything that stands for CPS in our house, and we need a lot of CPS in our house. My CPS is children, children prayer service or children participating in scripture. Scripture, yes. We need those kind of CPS in our house. Because we letting everything else go on, but the real CPS, children prayer service. We need prayer in our in our homes and letting our kids know it's not okay. But anyway, um, went to court and I talked to the judge. I told the judge, I said, you may see me several times. I said, it's a shame that they're giving y'all a check for uh, things that y'all trying to tell us what to do for our own kids. And y'all got a, y'all getting a free check and their parents need to do in the house. But they they sending the kids to you guys and y'all telling the parents what they need to do. And I say it's a shame because y'all should be as y'all got all these degrees. If you're going to be a judge, just something that's mattered, like people murdering one another and stuff like that. But it's unheard of of kids court I'm sitting in the courtroom and I'm I'm looking at young kids and I'm looking at kids probably 19. What is you doing up in here? What you done done? And the parents talking about they can't control the kids, that the kids doing this, the kids stealing keys and jumping in cars and wrecking in their cars and this and the other. It was it was ridiculous. But let me tell you what happened though. Let me tell you how when you stand on the word of God, that how God will come in a midst of everything of chaos and still bring you out on standing on the word. I told the judge that. I told her, told her the first judge, I said, you know, y'all need to be doing something else. Then, you know, they wasting y'all time with this these children problem that parents need to be parents to discipline their kids to have a foundation that, that it wouldn't have to be children court. And the lady shook her head and everything. And she told Leah, she said, I'm going to put you on six months um, probation. Um, um, she said, um, she said, if the parents need parenting classes, which I didn't do no parenting class. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you about the parenting classes. But I, um, Carrie, my wife, she agreed to it. And I was out, I think I was playing with the kids, playing with my boys, playing basketball with my boys in the front yard. And uh, she got on the computer and I guess, I guess they had classes, you know, parenting classes at Skype. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, uh, go in the house. Sit with your wife and listen. I want you to go in the house and listen to uh, what's going on in the parenting classes. So I said, okay, Lord. I went in, I came into the house. And um, as my wife was listening to parenting classes, there was like maybe eight or nine other parents that was on there with her. Um, one lady was talking about, you know, her 12, 13-year-old daughter, you know, going, going in her room, getting in her clothes and, and going to school, dressed a certain kind of way. And uh, when the therapist asked her, well, what kind of clothes? She said, what kind of clothes of yours she, she's wearing? And when why would she put the camera on her up and from top to bottom? Um, she had on a uh, white T-shirt, maybe with a Brazil bra, probably two, two size small. Her, her, her chest looked like it was so tucked up. She pushed up to almost, it almost going to hit her in the chin. And you can see through the bra where you can see her, and I'm not trying to be disgusting, but just I'm telling you how people dress, nipples and stuff, and then shorts, you know, see-through shorts, that the shorts look like they can be her underwear, and her underwear was barely up under, up under the shorts that it tried to hold up her, her cheeks of her behind. 
And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't say nothing yet. I said, well, what you what you present is what you get out of it. What they your what your children see the parents do. That's what the children going to do. If they dressing like that, you dressing like that. Well, they gonna think it's okay when they get old enough to show what they got. But anyway, let's get back to the um, the parenting classes, and then you, I'm listening to all this not, uh, this stuff that I know I'm not gonna put up with. So they got down to my wife and asking her questions. Mind you, I got into the video and I was going to say something. The therapist at first was like, well, I don't have your name on here to be in the therapist, the, the, the therapist session. She said, what's your name? I told her my name and stuff. And she said, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you, your name is on her, on her, on Leah's appearance as a parent of Leah. So yeah, yeah, it's fine. So she was talking to my wife, my wife, I don't know this and that and other. So she got to me. Sometimes God will give a give a doorway that you can say something where his word can come in. I said, let me say this. And this is what I told them in this class. I said, we better get back to the basic of the word of God. I said, we have allowed people and authorities to tell us what to do to how to raise our children. I said, but we better get to the base of the the words that you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I said, it ain't going to hurt the child to get whooped. I'm not saying beat them and knock them, you know, until tomorrow and stuff, but give them an understanding. You know, by by those stripes, they are healed, delivered, and set free. Huh? That, I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be funny. I said, all this stuff that y'all laying out and saying what your children doing and this and that, you allowing it to happen. The lady said, "Yeah, but I don't have a, I don't have a, a, a husband or a boyfriend or a, their father to lay down the law like you doing." I said, "But that ain't the, that ain't the point. You still got a resource that, that can help you, which is the Lord." I said, "God will deliver you from everything that you're going through." I said, I'm, "I was raised by my mother." I said, "But my mother stood on the principle of the Word of God." Family matters. Listen to me, y'all. Family matters in these days and age because the street's going to do what they want to do to your children. That's why we need to inter intercede on what we need to do. So listen, as I was talking to stuff and they listened to me, I think I went on and then uh, the it, it got so strong. God came into the, into the meeting so strong that even the therapist, now listen to this, the therapist started confessing what she was doing. She said, yeah, I was an alcoholic. I, I drink. I left my kids at the house by themselves, this and the other. She said, but, but when God changed me. See, we listen to trying to get advice from therapists that don't want to tell you that God changed them. They don't want to let you know their downfall. But the lady started telling them what she went through. And she said, I appreciate it. She called, she said, Mr. Poole, she said, because it came, it brought me back into reality. I can't give y'all uh, what you can do for yourself. She said, I can't give y'all as a therapist what you need to have as a therapist should do what the law say. And I said, yeah, because there is no law to tell you how to discipline your children, that you can't whoop your children. She said, but I can tell you this. Like Mr. Poole said, there has to be a structure, a foundation, which is the word, y'all. She was telling them. And next thing you know, they would start saying, you know, well, we need to get back in church. We need to get back in. I said, get in your word. Get into what God have, have put in you and still in you as parents to raise your children in the way that they should go in him that they won't depart. And I was telling, talking to them and the, the, the whole session went into uh, People being delivered, saved, and set free. See, we don't know why God would tell us to go and go into place because I refused to that. The police um, that came out here with them, he was looking at me. He was laughing. I'm not talking about the lady, but he was laughing. And afterward, he said, he said, he shook my hand. He said, I, he said, I just want to commend you. He said, I wish I can go to a lot of places, a lot of homes and stuff that they have parents and a father like you, a dad like you. He said, everything they were saying to you, he said, your face expression was like, you ain't hearing it. You're going to stand. I said, I'm standing on the word. He said, keep on. He said, because we need people like you. Okay, listen to this though. So 
I told y'all about the judge of judges. After I, the judge, uh, I'm jumping here and there. I'm trying to narrate a little bit. So the judge said, Mr. Poole, you have a good day. You know, I, I knew something touched her, but didn't know. You know, God knows. But anyway, um, after she uh, did what she did and told my, my my daughter what she needed to do, and my wife, she went into her parenting classes and this and that, um, we went back. Now listen to this. When I went back, that same judge wasn't there again. Mind you, I told her and told them, and even in the beginning, I said, y'all need to be doing something else because this is unheard of. So every day, I said, we need to get on the principles of what God have told us. So when we went back uh, six months later, she wasn't there. There was another judge there. He, it was a, a guy judge. And he said, uh, he said, I'm dismissing everything from you, Aaliyah. He said, I'm dismissing you from probation and everything. He said, let me tell you why. He said, I read, I read through the notes what the first judge said and said that the judge talked so highly of your dad, talked so highly of what your dad said, that even she went to do something else. And he said, I want to do the best we can to get you to where you want to go and, 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 and educate, educate you, get you um where you want to go in, uh, in society as a woman. He said, what do it? What is it that you want to do? My, my daughter turned around and said, a therapist. I want to tell kids and, and show kids, you know, and talk to kids about their problems and stuff. Look at God. See how God would see when you, when you stand on the word of God, God would teach them when you think they ain't learning. And he said, I want to commend you, dad, for what you have done. He said, I wish that it was a lot of people that come in our court room and and say what they what you have said and the impact that you had on the first judge and you. He said he said keep up the good work. And I say that to say this: family matters when you put God first. This is a testimony to someone. If you put God first, don't kneel to nothing that this world and man may say, but kneel to what God has said. Because God have charged us to be, become parents, become what God wants us to be as parents to live a holy life. I think if I let me go into the scriptures, because some of y'all think and see, because some people won't just want to hear what they want to hear. I think it's in the book of Second Timothy. Um, fourth chapter, first through five, second Timothy, you can read it for yourself. Fourth chapter, first, the verse first through five, it talks about God charge us to, um, preach the gospel in season and out of season. Um, uh, he told us that even in there, I'm kind of narrating down in there. It talks about people, you know, they rather have people to tell them things that they want to hear. He called it itching ears. They will turn from the true doctrine of, of God, the doctrine meaning the foundation of God, to turn to what they want to hear, preaching prosperity and this and the other thing. That's, that's what people, that's what man wants you to, and the streets want you to hear. And you know what was crazy? Listen to this. I'm going to hurry up and get out of here because I've been on here too long. Uh, people rather listen to this stuff, prosperity and new homes, new cars and money and this and that. All that stuff going to fade away. But listen. The same government that's trying to tell you how to raise your children is the same government right to this day. They building more prison. They building more jails for to receive your kids. And don't you know, even the kids, every child, every time you turn on the news and people going into the prison system, going into the jail system, don't you know that's money that's being put back into the government, getting put back into the state for your child to be locked up? Your child to be locked up, that's putting money back into the government pockets. And they keep building and building and building. Just imagine how many people done gone to prison or been to prison and stuff and been in there so long. Each day is a certain amount that they get. And you're getting people for, um, sentenced to life in prison. Excuse me. And that money is going into their pockets. And they spend it the way they want to spend it. They don't want to tell you, even though they're telling you not to discipline your children, but when your child get a, a, a up in age that they got a, a jail cell with just a hard bed and, and they feed you uh, food that they want to feed them, they don't want you to know that. 
they just want to try to tell you not to beat them because we got something for them when they get there. Even in the even in the courtroom, listen to this. And I, I promise I'm gonna let y'all go because fa family matters. Um the lady, she was yelling at the judge. I think she was talking to the judge. She was saying something to a judge or saying something to one of the lawyers. And, uh, well, what am I supposed to do? What what I need to do? You know, I'm going through this. I'm going through, I don't believe you're going through hell because you ain't been to hell. Because you've been, you, you been through hell. You, you, you've been in change when you get back. But she said, I've been going through all this stuff with this girl or this child. And what I'm supposed to do? The judge, listen to what the judge told her. Said, that ain't my child, that's your child. You figure it out. Now, mind you, they so quick to call CPS or people. I don't care who called on me because I'm going to stand on what I am. And whoever called, that's between you and God. I forgive you, but you and God got to get in count of that. Because I haven't, even when she put up a, a post and stuff, at that time, she, my, my daughter put up that post. I didn't get a call. Somebody checking, seeing what's going on. Tell that your daughter said this and that. I didn't get a call until my twin brother and my brother Rick called me. And my brother Rick told me. He said, I knew it was a lie because I know Leah. And he said, I know you. I'm not putting up with that. I'm not putting up in no nonsense. I didn't put up with nonsense when I was um, growing up. I was, I'm going to be honest. People say something to me. I'm ready to... I'm, I'm ready to Throw hands. But I had to discipline myself. Listen to this. I thank God for mentors. Ray Talbert, I'm going to tell you something, bro. You are being a tremendous blessing to me. If somebody um, have uh, have uh, the access to connect to Ray and let him hear this, Ray, man, I, I, I appreciate you. Ray Talbert was an NBA player, but he always knew where homecoming. He always dealt with the the children that was in the church, and his and not just in his mom church, but children. Period. But he he took me and my brother them up under his wings, and you know, let us see. That's how I love fell in love with basketball because of him. Ray, man, I appreciate you, man. I'm gonna give you your flowers while you live. Lord, and, uh, and Bobby Wilkerson. We had some great people that came out of Anderson, Indiana. Bobby Wilkerson, uh, uh, Roy Taylor, uh, Kojak Fuller. These guys, um, some of my boys that, um, Doc Fade, them boys played basketball. I was looking at them. Maurice Richardson, uh, uh, Brent McCutler. All, all, I know Madison Heights. Y'all, y'all, some y'all know Anderson Highly. I'm talking about Madison Heights. Uh, Anderson, yeah, Roy Taylor came out of there. Um, who else was great from Anderson? I, I, uh, 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 it's so many. It's so many greats came out of out of Anderson. Um, Anderson High School too. Uh, Rico Lewis, his brother Troy Lewis. Um, all of those guys, man, they just uh, men of God now. Kojak, man, I commend you. I see what you're doing, man. But even if I miss names, all of y'all that we play ball with, in street ball, whatever it may be, I thank God for mentor. But we knew the boundaries. We knew the restructure of respecting our peers. Ray, man, I really appreciate you, man. It got, I'm getting ready to be emotional because this man, he did so much for me and my brother. Them. I seen him not, not too long ago. He's doing a camp now with kids, you know, developing them. Um, another young man, he probably don't know, Alvina Manson. Man, I appreciate you, man. Somebody give these messages to these to these um, young brothers and sisters. Lenore Hampton, choir, man, you oh, ain't nothing I can express to say how much I'm grateful to you, ma'am, for what all you have done for me and my family. Lenore, you you are you just a special place in my heart. Love you. Um, Alvina Manson took us to the box and uh, at that time it was called Pow Club uh, Window. I think that's what his name was. It was telling us we had to learn how to control, control, anger, control because we can get knocked down but we know how to get back up, control our environment, control what we can con control. And I just want to say thank you for these these mentors to let us know family matters, y'all. Family matters. It's not, it's not going to hurt your children to di discipline your children. I had to go to court with my daughter and find out they was commending me for what people is criticizing me. Even the CPS wanted to come and try to tell me what, uh-uh. I had to stand on the word of God and come out. God's word stood right where it was standing. They was coming to me thanking me for what I was doing. Thanking me. 
I hear the talk. Do I do I respond to it? No. I don't respond to what people say bad about me anymore. It doesn't matter. If you want to talk to me, that's fine. If you don't, that's still fine. I still love you. Pray with you. If you hate me, I love you more and more. I love my enemies more than my even myself. Because if I have enemies, I must be doing something right. Keep talking about me, Dad. I want you to talk about me. I want you to say things because when you say something about me, it gets the attention of God to God to see come and see what I'm doing. My daughter, she's doing good. My kids, they doing well. They act out, yeah, all kids going to be kids, but, you know, we know how to put them back in place. Do it the way God told us to do it. Spare the ride, you spoil the child. It ain't going to hurt them, y'all. Family matters. Now stop trying to listen to what people saying, our ears to become itching on what people saying, run into this other stuff and run to the word of God because Second Timothy 4 and 1 through 5 will tell you. We got to get back into the word of God. CPS, like I said, my CPS in this house, children prayer service, children participating in scripture. Let's do that CPS and watch and see the CPS we put in our children will make them become productive in the, in the, the, the places that they want to go. I love y'all guys. I just want to give y'all parents a word of encouragement. Love even my other children, they, my other baby's mother and my other oldest kid. Love y'all. Love everybody. I don't have no animosity towards nobody. Nobody. But I just want to give y'all this encouraging word. Raise your children. Don't let the state, don't let the city, don't let the government raise your children because if you allow the government and the state raise your children, they got a place that they call jail, J-A-I-L, prison system to put them in and talk about you. And the people look at you because they, your kids went to prison and stuff and talk about well, you didn't do this to you for your kids. You didn't raise your kids, right? Even judges, I'm hearing this, y'all. This is your child. So that's, come on. Come on, y'all. Let's raise our children up to be what they need to be for God. Put God first that they will be able to tell someone else. Because family matters. I love y'all. Y'all stay prayed up. I just wanted to give y'all that, that praise of what God have done for me. This, that, this is just a blessing. So I came on to let y'all know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your children go, taking you through or whatever, put it in God's hands and do what God tells you to do. I love y'all. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I'm out.